Right, guys, and welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast with me, CY, and Baker, FPL343. How are you doing this evening, mate? Evening, mate. Been a while. After it has been so, a while. After so many game weeks and so many days, this one is a long one, mate. But yeah, it's been a while. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Cheers. Cheers. Good stuff. Um, yeah, it's been it's, it's it's a long drawn out game week, isn't it? It's twenty one. Lot going on. Yeah. You know, obviously the sun injury news has come out. There's rumours of Everton being cancelled midweek, which is a bit of a problem. Um, but you know, and the double isn't what we expected, or we what not what we expected, but not what we wanted. I think, and it's you know, it's, it might it might have helped a few people on certain sort of chip strategies hold off potentially. Um, but I'm still looking at bench boosting. Tough, mate. We'll we'll change it many times between now and between now and next Friday. Is it next Friday? We got the deadline. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Friday night game. We're not talking about tonight. No, 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 no. We're not talking about that. But before we before we uh, get onto what we are talking about, just a very quick, as always, a podcast plug. So, um, guys, follow the Twitter accounts at Above Average FPL and at Baker FPL three four three. Podcasts available on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, we're also on YouTube um, at is uh, youtube.com forward slash above average FPL. What I will say is this podcast is going to be better viewed on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of visuals, a lot of graphics, and um, I'd highly recommend it. We'll try and make sure that you know we convey the information as best we can to the um, for anybody that's listening on audio. But uh, honestly, I'd really recommend you watching it. Um, if you're watching it, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe. There's going to be a load of good stuff coming um, over the next few months. And, um, you know, if you're listening to a podcast, whether it's on Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever, make sure you leave a review. Give us five stars. It'd be great. Um, you know, and get in touch with us if you want to have a comment or, or, or a chat or anything like that. Good. And well done to Baker for hitting 5,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah. I've now got more followers than Rank. <laughs> yeah <laughs> happy days so, yeah may I, I may i need to be like half half your rank to get near my followers so yeah. we'll get there we'll get there i just hope my rank comes down more than my followers go up that'd be that'd be preferable yeah i don't know which yeah no i want to keep my rank below my followers yeah that's 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 <laughs> yeah. the aim isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so um well i mean this this podcast this evening i mean that, that we're recording so we're recording on saturday evening um, in between the two game weeks and you know it's a it's a little bit different and it comes off the back of you know conversations that have been happening uh that, that, that you had last week actually when you were speaking with um with with llama over at fpl game week and you know it was just a discussion about bonus and yeah. how bps works um and so you did a great little great little snip there for for them and if you want to go and check check that out you can go check that out at uh, the FPL Game Week on YouTube. There's a decent clip there for you. Um, but, mate, just tell us more about what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I mean, actually, some of it came from the day before, um, which was the Tottenham game. And, you know, I watched it as an Emerson owner mm. and um, just watched the whole of Twitter just berating Emerson for the fact <laughs> of doing that. And interestingly, from a Tottenham fan... I could absolutely see what they were saying, but from an FPL owner, I was sitting there thinking, just keep putting these hopeless balls in because they're great, you know, from a from an FPL perspective. Just keep putting them in. And every time someone touched it, I was like, fantastic. Tick, tick, you know, and um <laughs> yeah, so I just I thoroughly enjoyed that game from it and seeing 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 how we went. And then yeah, ended up in a conversation with Lama and um was explaining that asked me I'd done some things about Trent before and why he's so good on the bonus. Um and I kind of ignited the the thinking of me of thinking, hmm, I haven't really done a lot of looking into that this season. Um and I should. And I should. So then you know, we had a bank holiday, didn't we, on the Monday, and I thought to myself, we didn't do a pod on the Sunday night. I might just mm. go do some digging. Might just go do some digging and look at each team and look at who's stealing the bonus and what else won't we find. And the more I looked, the more excited I got. And I was like, let's have a chat about this. And then um, you saw um, in midweek how bad my Excel skills are. I do everything very, very manually and you're very, very good at these. And I was like, 
here's a load of data. Can you now make it pretty, please? And we can talk about <laughs> it. So, <laughs> yeah, we did that. We did that. We did that. That's, that's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. So, yeah, we we're going to do that. So how we're going to run it, um, you know, we're going to talk about for, for any sort of new listeners or anybody new to the game, you know, what BPS is, how it works, why it works. Um, you know, we're going to look at the positive elements of it and the negative elements of it, as in what contributes to it. Um, then we've got like a, you know, a summary by um, by club and we're looking at like the primary beneficiaries of bonus um, based on their influence on the game. Uh, we'll look at how, you know, teams have fared as well in that in that respect. And we'll look at, um, you know, particularly over the course of the season, how that has changed. And we all know that, you know, teams have, uh, you know, we, we can see quite clearly that teams like Arsenal, for example, started off poorly uh, and, and now, now a lot better. Um, you know, we've seen in the most, last few weeks, Liverpool, case of Liverpool drop off, Chelsea drop off a bit, Tottenham obviously resurging, uh, a bit resurgent as well. So, you know, there's all there's all that which is does is kind of explaining is correlated in how the bonus um the bonuses are distributed and uh, actually the the points that they accumulate towards the bonus are distributed as well so we'll walk through that and then we we've, we've got a bit through each team and uh and, and, you know who's and we can go run through each team spend three or four minutes just just going through each team or well maybe hopefully less on some of them but uh and hopefully this is the way that it's not just we're telling you these are the bonus, but actually try and make it into a bit more of a football sense of saying, actually, what does this tell us about players and what does this tell us about teams? And hopefully that the aim is it might bring out a new dynamic of it. And, and bonus is really important. We looked last week on our pod at FPL Optimised on the season review. And the one thing that stood out to me was that you were, I think, about 26 percent or 27 percent of your players get bonus every time you pick them so one in four i'm sort of around 30 percent and that's yep. you know correlated to a very good rank you know in the top 5k and hopefully if everton play it'll get better um and the world number one what we noticed is that was one of the areas we've beaten us on is that he's um 35 percent so more than one in three of his players get bonus every game every that, game yeah that's big yeah that's big he's picked 230 players this season and 80 of them got a bonus point that's huge so we we're like mm, maybe we should try and work through who could who should we be targeting and it evolved didn't it we started looking at teams and then we started thinking actually how could we use this around matchups and mm. what does that tell us about certain teams and that's where it then started the more we looked, the more excited it got. So that discussion, that discussion we had, what was it last night? Just a five, ten minute discussion on the, on a yeah. couple of players, which we'll come to. But yeah, you know, that's a, a really interesting point, particularly moving into the, into the game week that we've got coming up um, as well. So, okay, so we'll we'll start then uh, in terms of in terms of so what what is what is BPS? What is the BPS? So the BPS is, you know, the BPS is designed to you know. <laughs> it's difficult to explain i mean that's why we're doing this but it's, it's essentially a way of you know accounting for um actions in the game, actions in the game yeah actions yeah. in the game and it provides a, a numerical number a numerical value for um you know certain actions like passes completed um you know crosses blocks interceptions shots on target goals everything. all that sort of stuff everything so yeah. you know we talk about we talk about like um you know fpl being simple and, you know, we talk about things like Sky Fantasy Football. Oh, they're great. They have recoveries and stuff like that. But FPL do incorporate it just slightly differently in the way that they mm -hmm. they do it. And they have to try and make it as fair as possible, which is why we have some some discrepancies in, uh, in things like points between goal scorers at different positions and stuff like that. But just very quickly. So then on to BPS. So in terms of where to find it. Um, so you need to enter to the help part of the website. Um, so I'll just run through this very quickly. And in the help part of the website, if you go to rules, and then if you go down to scoring, uh, you'll obviously get all the scoring elements, which you can see on the screen now, uh, which we all know. We all know those numbers. They're, they're quite straightforward. And then if you go down, you'll see what bonus points is. And it says it's a range uses a range of statistics to create a BPS score for every player. Three best get three, two, and one. If there are ties, then you know, people get more. And one thing that I found that was interesting... Um, you know, and I only did this through, you know, looking at the points conceded per team was that actually on average, right, there are more than six points awarded in a team in, in a game for each yeah. and every club. In fact, the only club that has 
exactly six points awarded in every single game they've played this season is Man United, which is interesting. That is interesting. So, yeah, so all of those are there, but they're not in a fantastic um, a fantastic sort of order. They're in a very or... jumbled order. It, it doesn't really make sense in terms of like phases of what things are, so we thought we'd try and help a bit. Help a bit. Cool. So we'll move on to the positive, um, the positive elements of it. Yeah. And I guess when we talk about this is... Um, is you hear a lot about baseline when you talk about bonus so effectively goals and assists and clean sheets are separate to what they call baseline because they're like they happened and it equaled a goal or didn't equal a goal so they're the big numbers that you that you end up with that get added um, everything else filters into something called a baseline. Um, so passes, saves, all of those type of things, creating chances, blocks, tackles, all those things, they equal a baseline. So when we get on to and look at clubs, what we will look at is what the baseline is and then what they end up at. So yeah. when we look at the goals, for example, they favour strikers. It's really their only currency. It's the only way they get to bonus in most of them because their baseline on average is about five points. You know, yeah. is they and it makes do... sense. They're at the wrong end. Of the, they're at the end of the pitch where, yeah. you know, basically they're the only ones responsible for the actions in there and there's less, there's less of them than there are defenders. So, you know, the odds are stacked yeah. against them in order to do stuff. And, you know, with things like tackles and passes and things like that, not really being part of their game as it's not part of... You know, transitioning the game from from attack or from defence to attack, then they're just not involved. So, no. so yeah. that's their big currency. They get they get points for scoring goals more than midfielders. We always have that thing that we have midfielders that are technically forward that are out of position in there, but they don't favour the bonus as much because they do the work of a forward, so their baseline is lower, but they get less bonus for scoring. So. That is one of the things when we're looking at it is to think that sometimes, as everyone says, oh, you get the extra point for a goal, but you do have less ability to achieve bonus. You've got to be the talisman. You've got to be the person that does most of the work. Um, defenders don't get anywhere near as much for goals, but they get, you know, 12 points for a clean sheet. I think the thing always to remember with defenders is baseline is so important because everybody gets the 12 points for the clean sheet. So therefore it's bone, it's, it's the baseline which differentiates and that's where it becomes really, really important. Mm. Um, and then you've got all the, all the other good stuff, you know, so if you're an active defender in recovering the ball, so high pressing teams recover the ball a lot, you know, so therefore actually they can accumulate bonus all over the pitch. Um, pass completion, those people that control the ball, have lots of the ball and, and, and use it well, then they always tick, tick along. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think, I mean, just, just, just looking at it from a, um, from, from a footballing perspective, it's, it's quite clear why teams like Liverpool and Man City mop up bonus because they, they exhibit yeah. all of these tendencies and these, and, and strategically, that's how they manage their games. Yeah. Um, you know, City suffocate and dominate football games constantly, yeah. um, move the ball around a lot. Liverpool, extremely high press, want to win the ball high up the pitch, quick transition, straight into a chance, um, you know, and high volumes of chances. So, yeah. Yeah. And that, what I said around the Emerson thing is successful open play cross. Is 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 a point in the in 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 your bonus points is so therefore, like if I cross it and you hit it off the top of your head straight up in the air and it literally doesn't even make it to the goal, that's good. Yeah, that's that's why volume is key. Yeah, and I guess it's the thing on the positive is we talk a lot about like non penalty xg and things like that. That's yeah. not a positive actually. In fact, it's a negative. So, you know, if yeah. they don't score, it's a negative. So, well, that's it. But then, yeah, ex exactly. And if you, if one of those, you know, one of those ridiculous crosses ends up at, in at a striker's head and he's two, three yards out, I mean, that's created a big chance, isn't he? So, yep. you get extra points for that on top of that. Yep. To the bad. To the bad. Yeah. Let's have a look at the bad stuff. 
So there's obvious ones. I'll probably do the only other thing on the good because I just said that they missed the penalty is if a keeper saves a penalty, it's just, it's hard to beat. Plus 15, keepers have a very, very strong baseline. Most of them have a baseline between about 15 and 17. You add 15 points onto it, regardless of the clean, they're almost always going to get you in the bonus yeah. points. Um, vice versa, miss a penalty, get yourself sent off, score an own goal, all of those bad things, get a yellow card. Yellow card is one that you know really does hurt a lot of players. Um, conceding a penalty actually is, is something in there. If you're a rash defender, you might think, a lot of people think that, oh, you don't you know, lose points for it. We well, don't, definitely don't get bonus normally if you concede a penalty in a game. Um, as is making a bad error. You know, all of those type of um, things are bad. And then, then it's actually those things like missing big chances, having, you know, shooting off target. Yeah. So if, if you hit a pot shot and it just rolls into the keeper's arms, no issue. Yeah. Balloon one over the bar, bad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you know, being economical is really, really important from a bonus perspective. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we can't tell players to do this, but, uh, you know, look, looking for those that almost do what they need to do to gain their points and then piss off and disappear um they're the ones you kind of want um yeah. or you want them to you know be involved and then the team realize they need to dominate or they, they can they can sit back and dominate the passing you know can they can tick those passing boxes stat powders. Um, stat powders yeah i mean well yeah you look at you look at trent and virgil van dyke and stuff like that it's... i mean they're a bit better than Trent stat powders yes uh, hoiberg at tottenham there is a, a prime example of a stat padder Oh yeah, yeah. Is, little, is little one-two of... pass in, in defensive yep. midfield when there's no one within forty yards of him. Yeah. Yep. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. So, so we're moving on to the beneficiaries, yeah. Yeah, I think we've explained it. Strikers are very much benefit from from goals. If you don't score as a striker, you're definitely not getting bonus. Midfielders, you need to do a fair bit. You need to be good to get in the bonus. You know, and either have multiple turns or have a really strong influence in the game. Defenders can get it from a number of ways. Yeah. So, teams. Teams. So, on screen, our, our, our lovely faces have gone now, so we can relax. But, um, yeah, on teams. So, I mean, what we can see quite clearly here, and we need to caveat, obviously, you know, we're Tottenham fans. We like to make Tottenham look good. So, we've done basically... <laughs> <laughs> we've basically done from Conte onwards um, for for Tottenham, and in fact, no Baker Baker did look at um, Villa post Gerrard, yeah. and I mean, no need to really look at Smith post Nor uh, Norwich post Smith, um, and even Newcastle post Howe. There wasn't really any material changes in, in in what they were achieving per game, so it wasn't really necessary to include them. But because there's been such a stark change in the way yeah. that Tottenham have performed. Um, then you know it was it was and it's a fair of... time as well you know is is it's half the season basically that's been played so far has been played under conte it's not a few games now it's it is eight so it's you know it's still volatile um but and it's probably something that you do need to keep in the mind when we're talking through this the caveat of one is it's only eight games two is he's moaning constantly about needing new players which might mean the players that look good now don't look good in a few weeks um and they've had a few play teams that they've played that have had men sent off. Um, yeah. But those things only happen if you are the team in ascendancy normally. Yeah. I um, mean, Tot Tottenham, for example, in the first uh, in the first 10 games, so before Conte took over in game week 11, had an average of 21.2, which would put us down like below Villa uh, around about the Everton mark, yeah. if you want to see that. And in terms of, um, in, in terms of points conceded, uh, you know, we're at like 25.34. So that puts us, you know, behind Everton, above Brentford, but almost like down near the Watford. In fact, almost as bad as Newcastle. Yeah. And Burnley. So, I mean, it's not really a metric. There's a reason why a manager gets sacked, you know, and, yes. and, and that. I think so. Let's explain the table we've got in front of us. Go for it. <laughs> Here is that. Because, you know, this is something we've made. Therefore, is is we've used a number of different places to help us that, primary one i would say we've used so we must give them some credit it's fantasy football hub on this one 
So I said, we'll give him a little shout out on this one. It's a very good site for, for looking into bonus. Um, but we looked at, in an average game that that team plays, how much bonus do their players get and how much bonus do the opposition get? So, for example, in Liverpool, they average that they take five bonus out of the game in every game they play. So there should be six points. There's sometimes more because of people can dead heat, as it were. Yeah. Um, and they concede one and a half. So they're actually 6.55 points per game in their games so far this season. Um, the four, the uh, 29.67, let me just get that right. That's the sum of the top five players from well, the, their it's, game. It's the average. So, average, we t- yeah, so it's, it's the average score of their top five players, which are the guys that you see at the bottom of the reports in the fixtures and results. When yep. you're looking at the bottom, you see the five top five bonus point BPS scorers in the yep. uh, in, in the game for each team. Um, so on average, Liverpool's players get around 29.67 points. Uh, and they don't then, then, so you can look all the way down that table. Which basically says that if you're a Liverpool player to get in the bonus, because that's the top five, you've got to get over 30 points. So if you took, for example, Salah, and this just shows how good he is when we get to him. But if he's... Uh, not getting, you know, the 24 points like a striker. If he's only getting 18 points from a goal, he's still got to get 12 more points. And he doesn't get that on his baseline alone. So he literally has to get multiple returns to get bonus at the moment. And he still is. I mean, it's just genuinely remarkable. But probably we'll also, when we get to it, talk a bit more about why Jota and Mane don't get it because they they get so many on on their baseline across Liverpool. And then the teams they're playing at, their own, the average of the top five that play against Liverpool is 18. That is phenomenal. Yeah. It's... That really is. So it's basically saying you might have somebody isolated who gets okay because he scored a goal, but the rest of them are just getting hammered because nobody can keep a clean sheet against them. Wow. So that that is um, that's how the table is. And then first, second, third is basically as it stands for so far this season, who has been getting the bonus the most, who has been getting bonus second, and who's been getting bonus third. Um, and in the colours you've got there, if they're yellow, it's a striker. If they're white, it's a defender. If they're, what was saying? Some blue? Blue. <laughs> um, it is a midfielder, and the green, the rarity is the goalie. Yeah. And what you can see, I guess, it, 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 in most of that is that, so from a player perspective in positions, and we'll, we will go through each team, so we'll look at more of those one, two, three, and why they're there. But just as a generalisation, as a picture, strikers on the whole, the lead striker in the team gets the most bonus. Interestingly, apart from the three teams that are producing the most bonus so far this season, yeah, and I think what's what's interesting as well is that even if you exclude, so if you exclude Southampton from the discussion for a second and Burnley, mm. if you look at all the way through sort of that bottom half as well, is that every single one of those guys is a talisman, mm. like for their club. Even even if you look at Leeds and Rafinha is the is the obviously the yeah. main uh, the main beneficiary, he is the talisman. You go to Palace, Gallagher is the talisman, and he has been the talisman all season. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I mean all the others are quite quite straightforward. Puki. Wilson, Dennis, Tony, Calvert Lewin, uh, Huang, <laughs> Charlie Taylor. That's outstanding. I had no idea how that's how how he's in there, but I guess um, it shows because, because they're getting nothing. Why? So why have you not brought him in yet? I know. I always bring him in as well. Double game week, mate. Double game week. But Taylor and Loughton is Loughton is, is is. But you can see is even if you've got someone that's good in those bottom half teams, the most they're ever getting is like just under three points in it. Whereas if you so when you're thinking about double ups and things like that, you want to double up on the teams that are in the fours and uh, or certainly around the three and a half or above because you've got chances that those people you know can get not only multiple turns but get bonus multiple with it. bonuses with it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I think in the teams that are lower than that, that starts to tell me something that like maybe I just want the one and I want the talisman and and actually. I should be looking at these first two here and I shouldn't probably be looking any further at first and second on some of these. You say, yeah, you, I mean, you say that, but the problem the problem we've got with that is that 
out of all those teams, the one that you want is the striker. And we've only got three striker spots. And to be honest, you probably want a Ronaldo and or a Kane type thing. So you've only really got two spots for sort of like eight players, nine players. But doesn't that I mean, tell us a little bit about what we've said all season is that actually the better teams go for the higher priced defenders and go for the higher priced mids. It does, yeah. And actually, true. the lower teams, maybe we should be targeting the striker. Yeah. Yep. That may be the way to play now. That might be the thing. If you think about it, teams that players that have done well this season, Chilwell, the James, the Trents, the Alonzos, all of those ones, the Salah, the Jota, the Fodens, you know, have been brilliant for you. But up top, Dennis, you know, we've seen people Watkins in and out when he's been there, Calvert Lewin in and out. Vardy's actually done all right, you know, for that. Antonio's not a high priced um, striker. I've seen people with Pookie and Wilson and all that and done done okay. Yeah. Um, maybe that is telling us in terms of where we want to play, if you want to maximise it, is that in the big teams, you look at the best defenders and the best midfielders and just go, I get them. Um, and in the lower teams, maybe that's where we should be using our strike spots. Sounds good. Well, mm. yeah, it's definitely interesting. So, I mean, just to, just so we're moving on from there. So we have a little quick look at the sort of how the BPS has moved over time. Yeah. Um, and just because, you know, whilst, you know, we did like Conte ball only for Tottenham, I mean, it's important to notice, to, to note that obviously the teams have gone through different stages um, throughout the season, different levels of form, etc. You know, we've had managers being sacked, blah, blah, blah. And th there are some consistencies, but there are, you know, there is definitely a correlation with how the bonus marries up with, um, you know, how, how teams have been in terms of their form and how the league table is starting to shape up as well. Yeah. And if we look at the... If we look at, um, you know, Man City, for example, I mean, you know, they are relentlessly consistent in, I think they lost a game in game between game week one and seven. And they lost a game between game in game week eight to 14. I think the Palace game was in there and the Tottenham game was obviously in the first seven game weeks. But since then they had, obviously, they've I think, won 10 in a row now. And, you know, they're now up at like 34 for the last seven game weeks. Now, That's just this is by game week. This is by game week. And there are some teams that have played less games within that game week. That's yeah. all accounted for in the average, but there might be some, you know, slightly smaller sample sizes for some clubs like Tottenham, for example. Um, uh, but you know, they're they're averaging in the last seven game eight seven game weeks. They're averaging thirty four per person in that top five. That's so, just like out of this world. And I think that's you know you know when we go look at their club and stuff like that. So some players like Laporte and Diaz last season, you know. Stones happened last season, but Laporte this season as somebody that's been brilliant and actually rarely is getting any bonus because there's so many star performers every week in their team. I mean, so what the City one is unbelievable. So so this slide here says game split into three sections, game weeks, one to seven, eight to fourteen, fifteen onwards, and it says the average of those top five players four. Same thing against and then the variance bottom bit at the bottom is just the plus minus the minus, yeah? <laughs> against the yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. With. That's so, it. It's it's highlighted in red if it's above five, it's highlighted in green if it's above five positively, yeah. uh, red below five negatively. Everything in the middle is kind of a yellow. Yeah. Um I mean this which, again, just reiterates is if anyone is listening, this is definitely well worth having a look at, is because it it just it shines out. So if you look at some of the teams. Arsenal have improved and we know they have improved and that is a stark improvement. Brentford did okay at the start and uh fallen away. They are a team you could potentially target now. Yeah. Chelsea and Liverpool were just magnificent and it's not quite where it was. There's a few little nicks in the armour there. You know, they're still doing fact they're still doing okay themselves it's actually that they're now conceding more than bonus against them than they were previously and it's that they're allowing a lot of chances so well i mean liverpool have dropped off massively they they were between 8 and 14 they were at thir between 36 and 37 on average yeah uh, and they're now at 22 so you know there there is a cup there is a there is a few dinks in that it's those sloppy in that goals, armor isn't it? which so is it's the sloppy goals and it's the fact that Salah's blanked twice on and they missed the game as well and yeah. well the, well the missing game doesn't contribute to it but it but could be higher it could have been higher just i mean <laughs> they are it's br fine. brutal 
absolutely brutal. And the ones that are obvious is that is that Brentford, Burnley, Leeds, Newcastle, Norwich, Watford. If you've got players playing against those teams and you've got one that we talk about as a positive in the bonus conversations, they are good. They are a good one to look for. Um, and Tottenham, you know, and Arsenal look like the teams where they've picked up form. And Leicester a bit too, which um, which I feel is probably the Madison Tealman's type effect. It's almost like Vardy out might be good for them. Yeah, because he scored quite he scored quite well in the first few games of the season, yeah. didn't he, Vardy? So yeah, but it's him one... and him only. And now it's... starting, you know, players like Madison and Tillman actually bring more people into play, and and I feel that's starting to show in a benefit. Tottenham's one, Arsenal's one. Uh, they're very different, probably. Arsenal's one is that the is that their whole team is definitely playing better. Tottenham's one is very much born from defence. When we look at that one a bit more. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting. It's interesting that we you look at the binary team Watford as well, and you see how close all their matchups are, and it makes so much sense that that they just squeeze the life out of games. And uh, what what it means is their averages are generally quite poor, and both on positive yeah. on on, the, on their side as well as conceding, and you know, it reflects in their in their score lines. I mean, it is one actually that one. So the Tottenham Watford game. Obviously, Backman, because he was just saving like eight saves or whatever he did uh, on that one, he was doing okay when it was nil-nil. But it's one of those ones where I think is in a nil-nil, on a man of the match, if you were looking at watching it on Sky Sports, they'd give it to either the keeper or one of the defenders. But on FPL, it'll be the opposite. It'll be, it'll be one of the players in the attacking team because they're just putting balls in and they're just smashing the pass completion and all those type of numbers um, yeah I mean the, the the there would have been a large disparity there's a large disparity between Tottenham and Watford in that one game I mean Tottenham had 31.8 as an average and Watford had 17 now that mm. all spell that all is because of a uh, of that 96th minute winner yeah. where uh, you know a, a a player with a clean sheet gets, you know, Davison Sanchez gets another 12 points, Sun gets another three points, and, you know, the Watford guys all lose 12 points each in the night in injury time. Yeah. Which they would have been on the, and Backman included, so five of them lose it, and chances are at nil nil with the amount of saves that Backman made. I mean, I think Backman was top of the bonus before that. I think so. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, you know, it, I mean, but that's sometimes, that's, that's football, isn't it? I think it was. Yeah. I think it, him or Emerson were up there. Obviously, Sanchez got it because he scored the goal. And Anthony yeah. Sheik. Yeah. Cool. So that uh, definitely is something for me to think about is that what happens in bonus is also relative to what happens in real life because it is sort of an indirect attribute, isn't it? Because it's so heavily influenced by what happens in a match. So um, I guess it's the next bit is to sort of look at players. Um, and that was our thing. And then go well. Let's just look at every single club and see are there players we can pick out? Um, because what we've shown you is a little bit of um, who are the best players type things. But when you actually look at it, some of the times the reason they're best players is because the rest of the players are not very good, um, and it just happens they're the better of the ones. So if they win, they're likely to get there. Um, and some are just fascinating you know it's just the competition they've got in certain positions that um mean that there's only certain players that can get it so, so we're, uh, we're about we're about half hour in and we've got 20 teams to cover so <laughs> let's, let's try let's it. try and play let's try and smash it as quick as good as we can uh, look there's Make, someone here where i don't think oh, we're we, spend we don't, more than we just show, show it so people know what it is but <laughs> yeah cool um, and we're going to offer that as well so for, from that so so don't screenshot this and do this what we really want you to do is like the podcast subscribe the podcast if you like what you're about to see give us a little retweet help us reach a bigger audience dm us your email and we'll send you the google sheet and you can have a look at this to your heart's content don't sit there screenshotting your way through it we'll give you some um we'll give you the data and you can use it and do as you wish and it'll have all our comments on there as well Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we've got we've got show notes to uh, to accompany it. It's yeah. almost like we're prepared. We've we've actually done a premise for about eighteen months that we don't prepare, but we've actually done. I've a bit spent so much fucking time on it yeah, this week, up, mate. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you, mate. 
And you. Right, well, so, I know the source data, but then actually making it look like something that you could show yeah, on yeah, screen yeah, yeah. Is, is, is not... Right, let's go. Arsenal, yeah? Arsenal. Let's go. And we've done some highlighting to try and just steer you, basically, around where you want to where, where you want to go. But each of these tables is going to be the same. It's going to show you the number of games. Um, it's going to show you the baseline um, BPS, so the bits before the goals, assists, clean sheets mentioned earlier what they end up with as a total on average, and then how many bonus points they're doing. Really want to note here, we're using per appearance for our um, figures. There's different things, ways you could do this. So you could do per 90, you could do per start, you could do all sorts of things, actually. We're going per appearance, because actually that's how it works. You get bonus points per appearance. If you did per 90, what you'd end up finding is that players that come off at 60 minutes would have a really inflated baseline because it was, you know, they only played yeah, two yeah. thirds of the game. Actually, when it comes to bonus, it's a 90 minute game. And so therefore we use per appearance. Um, I believe you can only get per appearance on Panic Football Hub, which is why we used it on this one, but um, is per 90 is what they use on Scout, not sure on Fix. Um, but that's what we're using for this. So what it does mean is if you've got a player that comes off the bench regularly, that negatively impacts them because they only had 20, 30 minutes to therefore do something about their... Their, uh, their bonus or their B, their BPS is going to be a, um, a, a result of basically those non-baseline actions. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you look at Arsenal on this one and you look at... Tavares up there is he's not as bad as six on the baseline compared to everybody else but he's seven of his 13 appearances have been off the bench so we've done little cameos he's never going to do very well on it um we're here to talk about the ones that will do well and it's massively at those it's massively in those defensive numbers is Ramsdale's just he's gold you know, from, from a player, he does everything you need. He gets three and a half saves a game. He he makes nine recoveries. A lot of people don't really understand the recoveries, but from a from a keeper's point of view, that's get the ball off the opposition. And one of the best ways to get that is coming and claim at crosses. So any keeper that comes and claims crosses, recover and go. You know, and, yeah. and he's brilliant at that. Um, and so he ends up with a baseline over 15, which effectively means that all of the defenders have to get an attacking round return to beat him on the baseline, uh, on, on the bonus. And so that's what makes him so good. What we are seeing, though, is Gabriel and Tierney, they're getting attacking returns. They were, you know? well, Gabriel earlier on in the season rather than more recently, certainly... Yeah. And then Tierney um, the other way around is nothing. Yeah, I was going to say, games, yeah. you know, and and now is 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 really doing well on it. So yeah, and I think I mean, you know, the the other thing to add on 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 the attacking returns. I mean, you said you mentioned it's mainly the, the the defenders you want here. I mean, the others. If you look at the others and you think, who are the guys that I really want from Arsenal? And you know, obviously, we're looking at like the likes of Saka and ESR and Martinelli, Odegaard. Um, you know, those guys. I mean. Including Lacazette, they've had 41 attacking returns between them. Um, and they've still had less bonus than those three that are highlighted on there. Mad. It's Five just players, mental. all of which we won, all looking at, you know, why are they so cheap? 41 returns. Yeah. And less than those three big boys. And, yeah, Rams. You know, the only, thing, the only thing in the short term, I mean, if we're talking from a, you know, we're in game week 21 now, the short term is obviously not great for Arsenal, but... Um, from a, just the fact that they've got blanks, f confirmed blanks coming up, let alone COVID potentials. But yeah, he's they're the guys you want. He's, he's yeah. a hard one to go away from. <laughs> we awesome. had a question. We had a question on Twitter about who should we go away from if it was a from Ramsdale, and we just stay with Ramsdale. <laughs> well, let's move on to the next guys, Villa, because it's one of our old favourites, of which the keeper would be. Yeah, and it's Martinez, of course. I mean. He it leads the way in that team, but I guess immediately what shines out to me when I look at the baseline for that team is it's a low baseline. You know, yeah. is is um, Doug Louise at over twelve? Everybody else is kind of struggling to go above ten, which means that it's really the people at Villa who do 
the good things get the bonus if they get any you know is is and that that's the spine so it, this season throughout this season mings mcginn watkins they have done the work they've done they've come up with the goal when they need it the leaders in that team they're the ones that are sneaking home the bonus on 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 most weeks but they're not huge you know they've averaged less than three bonus per game just slightly under villa um watkins definitely since he's been back in in amongst the team he's he's looking like he's becoming a bit more of a positive and he's probably the one that could lead it but then what if they start playing Ings and where does that go and it's Coutinho and now we've got Coutinho the door's open definitely for someone to, to come in and really really do 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 good things in that team um, most of the wingers are just not getting a lot of games can't keep them fit but if he starts taking all the set pieces and he starts putting plenty of balls in for him Coutinho might become an option in that team I think more so, more so than anything he's going to be he's going to have the presence rather than I mean a lot of people have been saying today that oh he's not the same Coutinho fine okay from an ability wise point of view fine he's a few years older he's not the same guy but he's going to come in and like the place is just going to lift and he's going to be like he's going to be like Ronaldo he's going to come in and command certain things um on the pitch and you know he'll Definitely. be he'll be the one he'll be the one that wants to take as you say set pieces as soon as he gets on set pieces he becomes an opportunity he'll you know, it's a cross. It's a it's an attempted cross. It's a you know, big chance created. Whatever it is, um, I wonder whether they'll change shape a little bit. I don't think you can play Watkins and Ings and Coutinho all three unless you play Watkins wide. No, I'm still not 100 percent sure that they'll play Watkins but, and Ings type things. I feel like it's somebody plus them. You know, yeah. is 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 in it. But the only thing that's stopping really stopping Emmy this season is that they've only taken five cleans. So. Well, yeah, and I mean, yeah, I mean, you can see that, and his expected, his expected, like um, his post was it post shots xG um, mm. is much worse this season than it was last season. He was above by 0.2 last season. He's behind by 0.25 this season. He's got to, so he's got just to not. Improve. They're they've just yeah. He's not saving. He's not saving as many either. That's the thing as well. So right, then. Brentford. Do you know what? Like I highlighted a couple of these ones, but. There's nothing really. They're not worth. Well, I guess the one thing is the keeper, and it actually shows a tactic. They come for everything the the keepers. So whether it was Raya before him or Fernandez is, they're claiming you no know, ten recoveries a game. That is big, big numbers. And what it does mean is that if if Brentford ever keep a clean sheet, it's actually even hard for say a Tony to to get the the bonus above them you know is is because they are so proactive in goal in how they offer but they're not going to keep a clean sheet because then because they're brentford yeah and we've seen it actually the decline in their team um it's it's an issue you know is 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 the the defenders again are not bad um, you know, Janssen, we've got like Roeslev who's come in as playing sort of out of position in the wing back positions, but um, just yeah, in they've, general, they've their kept team one, they've, they've kept one clean sheet, yeah, they've kept one clean sheet since the middle of September in the league, so exactly, you know, is 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 yeah, game week five, I think, was the last time they kept a clean sheet. No, no, they did was keep it? one in November, um, was it? it was against, I did have it a second ago, yeah. well, that's Everton. Yeah. Everton at the end of November. With the 1-1-0. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 probably. Um, so, the good part for Tony is that he's the only forward on the books. And so, and they play with like a couple of forwards, which means that if he does score, he does all right. So, he, you know, he, we, there was famously one early in the season where he scored a penalty and didn't have a shot the entire game. 0.0, non-penalty XG, got nine points. Yeah. That stuff can happen for him because he's literally on his own. But nobody's going there. No, I mean, the biggest issue is they just concede. They just con they, they concede so many is that is that there are other players in other teams yep. that are picking up the bonus against them. Um, you know, and that's quite clear if you look at, uh, you know... Yeah, you know, they they pick up two point four bonus on average, and they concede four. So yeah. you know, it's it's the, it's the other guys that are picking it up. So yeah, right. right. 
Brighton. Brighton were quite hard to look at because of uh, formations. Like when you look through, I look through some of their games, and it's like they change, they change, they change, they change. They go four at the back, three at the back. <laughs> like even two at the top, one not up top. Welbeck I saw was back today in the FA Cup, so maybe he comes back in and they change it up again. Um, actually, Mopay and Welbeck, when they played both of them, and that happened last season, suddenly a lot of the bonus points come out of the defence because they're playing with two actual strikers. Um, mm. And so that's going to be interesting. But I guess when I'm looking at it, um, Sanchez is unlucky. He's unlucky in a way because I'm sure anyone who owns Sanchez has seen this, is that he often gets to two but two saves and doesn't get the third. Um, he's actually averaged 2.94 saves all, all season. <laughs> it's so irritating how much he, he, he gets he gets under it. It's like he either gets four or two, basically, is what, it, what tends to happen. Um, and therefore, he just seems to miss out. He doesn't actually get as much, but his baseline's really strong. Dunk was a monster, but we've got no dunk for a little while. Cucciarella, since he's come in, like you can see it if you watch him, he's a top, top player. For a guy who's new to the league in a defensive role, he averages 0.62 bonus per game he plays. That, that's a stunner. 14.4 baseline, you know. If they keep it clean, he's on 26, 27. And yes. he's playing very mm. high on the left side. Got a very good chance of getting an assist. I mean, the one that's the one that's interesting for me, if you look at that, is you could try and compare that to Lamptey because people are looking at people are looking mm. at Brighton at the moment and thinking like Lamptey's the guy; he's getting in the positions. I wonder if maybe the just the data that we've got here with the five sub appearances are probably mm -hmm. eschewing that baseline. That maybe we need to strip out those five appearances and see if we can, oh, excuse he, me, understand understand what he is from the start. Because, but even when he starts, it comes off, so it gets even it gets minute play. Mm. Like if you took those out. He's not doing it. Cooch is just an engine, mate. He is, you know, is he's not as fun as that. And I think when we get the Tottenham but one, it's the same. I was going to say it's the same. Magic. I was going. I was going to say it has it, it has similarities to to so the way that works. Similarities in, in yeah. how it works, but from a, no, from a bonus point FPL perspective, and he's getting assists in there with it. He's he's a genuine asset at five point oh. He's he's a very very good player, and those strikers. It does all feed to them. They do do okay. Like I always think that Mopay must do terrible because he misses so many ch just awful chances that you just think there's no way you should miss it. Like if you think about players in the league that miss big chances, I think like Jota, and then I'm like Mopay is <laughs> yeah. the next guy. But he actually does okay on the bonus. He mm. actually does all right. Is sometimes he doesn't miss them. And when he doesn't, he gets the three points. Yeah. So he, he, does, he doesn't tend to get many ones. It's either a free or you've just had a stinker um, for him. But yeah, they're ones, ones to watch. Bob's still good in goal. Cooch is great. He's the one I would look at going forward and definitely can see a point when we get him in the team. Fair That's enough. I mean, I was, I was recommending... See, I was speaking to brother-in-law or future brother-in-law and I was recommending Lamptey to him I think I might move away from that and tell him to get Couturella in still cheap though isn't he yeah Lamptey. still cheap yeah 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 oh yeah really cheap right Burnley 4.5s two of them two of them at Brighton uh, and Burnley even is but that probably doesn't reflect what I see when I watch the games is I feel like I um, think I like um Lowton more than Taylor. Yeah, but same. I think it's just a consistency point of view because this is one where you look at it and on average, his total BPS is like 15.9 and then Lowton's is higher and it's because Lowton actually offers you something going forward so he might also get an assist or might... Well, he's had, he's had, he's had a goal and an assist this season. He had that 14-pointer. Taylor, he doesn't do anything wrong. That's the basics of it, is is he literally doesn't do anything wrong, you know. And um, uh, one that was really interesting for me is I always used to think the goal threat of, of me and Tarkowski for a bit more money might be the way to go. But they never get the bonus. Yeah. They never do. Well, again, they're not, they're, not, they're not keeping the same amount of clean sheets as they have done in the past. And that's, again, why we're seeing 
like Pope. I mean, the, the, it must be that the quality of the chances that they are conceding are a lot, yep. higher. Well, than in previous the other thing seasons. Is that they've only <laughs> they've kept three clean sheets, and they were all nil-nil draws. So bad. So therefore. There's not four players that have got the plus 12. There's like nine players across the two teams yeah. that have got the plus 12. So therefore, it's complete lottery. So they've, yeah, just yeah, not yeah. Even, they've got no bonus. They've only got 29 bonus in their entire squad. It, like, That's nuts. In their whole team is they are just an absolute avoid. And, and they are different to Brighton in that their forwards, despite playing two, get nothing. Um, like... Wood and Vidra, that is as bad as it gets. Again, it's well, almost same. as bad as it gets, actually. There's a few, there's a few out there that, that yeah. are not there, but they aren't aren't far off. And that's where Corne has been benefiting, is that basically he is getting a little bit. He's got five bonus from ten games. Nice. Yeah. But the thing with Corn, how much how often have we said he plays as a striker? It, uh, yeah. That's what we say. He plays an absolute striker. Corne's baseline is 3.4. Yeah. So if he gets an assist, his base, his bonus will be, it'd go up to 12. He, he's only going to get bonus if he scores. Yeah. And then he's only still going to get bonus if he scores and they don't keep it clean. Yeah. Because Pope's getting 15 on his baseline and, and Taylor's up there 13. They're going to get more than that in a, in a clean sheet. So he's actually benefited this season because Burnley have been so bad in defence. And I do think if somehow at some point, and Dyche seems to do it at some point this season, every season, they tighten up, Pope will have a run of six or seven games where he goes 10 point, 10 point, 10 point, 10 point. It, it will probably happen at some point because the rest of them so bad. Yeah. But wherever you take that chance in the clean, it, I mean, in a double we've got, and they've got one, I don't like it because they are not keeping them. I've got Loughton. I've got I've got I've got Loughton. I've got Brownhill. I'm yeah. just I'm just gonna work with that. So <laughs> I set up, I set up for got. a wild card roll and yeah. bench boost. So Chelsea. Chelsea. There's so, a lot of players here. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of interesting players here. They use a lot of players, and they've got a lot of players, and there's a lot of high bonus lines. I've highlighted probably the first thing I've highlighted. Oh, just on, just, just on, just on that, just on that, because I didn't make any amendments to Burnley's team, I don't think. Did I? No, I did. I did. I must have done. Because I thought, it's only, they've only really had 12 players that have played. Yeah. It's generally been a squad of 12. So, let me caveat, is, is, is we took, where it made the screen, it wouldn't work, you know, yeah. because we've got some beautiful visuals with some lovely, you know, high quality pictures and stuff like that. Um, is if they use too many players, we were like, get rid of some of them. They are pointless. We don't need them. So um, when we get to Leicester, we won't be talking about Iose Perez. Probably one. To mention. <laughs> <laughs> but Chelsea have used a lot of players. The problem is they're um, all they're all contributing. They're, they're all they're they all are contributing. Big parts. So we were like, well, we can't just completely leave them out, you know. And um, uh, I guess uh, there's two halves to Chelsea. One is the defence. You know, and Reese James is the first person we've covered today who's averaging one bonus point per game. I mean, a lot of people in the last few weeks have been talking about he gets one point per game, but he actually averages for the whole season one bonus point for every single game he's played. That is incredible. Rid ridiculous. But it is born out of his attacking returns. It is completely relying on it because you can see on his baseline it's actually not nowhere near as strong as, as some of the other defenders and this is about a little bit about what i talked on the game week like uh, fpl game week last week is that the central defender at chelsea is the person who starts every move off so they always hammer past completion and they're always the last man for blocks so they always do well on the blocks and interceptions and clearances they always do well on passes so whether christensen plays in the middle whether Tiago plays in the, in the middle, you know, whoever plays that one, and particularly when Tiago plays on it, he is a monster and would always get bonus unless defenders return. And basically yeah. that's what's been happening with them is when they haven't returned, he's been eating up the bonus at 0.5 per game. Um, and when they have returned, the others nick it, which has been 
the James, the Alonso. We've taken out Chilwell in this because he's not going to play again this season. So it was like, what's the point um, yeah. uh, uh, of talking about him? But actually, I think the other thing is Alonso on a baseline has been slightly outdoing James since he's been in the team. Um, and, you know, might be the one to look at when we're looking at which one you come off. If they don't sign a left wing back, he might actually be 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 the one for them. But um, Rudiger, we've talked about before, a lot of people have him, but he's only getting bonus if he scores, albeit he's taking a lot more chances, so that gives him more chance to do so. Um, I've highlighted these two middle uh, centre mid guys, and the reason is, is different reasons, is, is that their baseline is so strong that if you add 18 points to it, so if Chelsea get a penalty, Jorginho goes from 13 to 31 because he scores yeah. every single one of them. Yeah. That suddenly at, makes at, it. At 31, at 31, you're in the bonus. Most. At 31, you're in the bonus. Most. So, most so when Chelsea most get a penalty, he basically gets about six or seven points for a penalty yeah. award. And Kovacic, I saw a really good article. I'll try and find it, share it. But basically talking about how previous managers had tried to limit Kovacic and how far, he, you know, what he does going forward. That's not happened under Tuchel. He is very much involved, you know, from a from a dynamic place, which is, you know, where he'd started, you know, when, when, he, when he was a young lad, that got him the move to Real Madrid. Um, and he's actually averaging more than a half a point every single time he plays. Two pass at Kovacic, he's a good player. Um, Probably because we go with Jorginho because of the penalties, though, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. they do get True. so many. And True. when Lukaku plays, he very much he's he's taking them home uh, a lot of the time. It's interesting to me that those wingers get very very little. Some of that's manage minutes, so you see a lot of them have the odd sub appearance, and some of them have come off. Um, Mount's fighting it through doing every single thing he can to to get it, and actually he's not doing too bad in the bonus but the hudson Adoys, the zh the pulisic havertz all those type of players so when we thought about havertz and think about the captain c and all that stuff is actually it's fucking stupid yeah because he was never going to get the bonus because he was playing center forward but getting bonus points as a result of being a midfielder yeah yeah it's yeah yeah <laughs> it sounds yeah, I wish we'd have done this like in game week eight. That'd I do nice. wish there's sort of a few other decisions we'll get to on that one. <laughs> Where would we like that one? Oh, Palace. Oh, Palace. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> it, uh, they don't keep clings, and they should. If they did, the defenders would be really useful. The, <laughs> the base lines are very, very good. Yeah, Coyote has a really inflated baseline because he technically plays as a central midfielder in the team and so he gets more involved and always gets the passes does loads of little blocks in front of it you know is is so there's some interesting ones if they kept cleans um great as a positive keeper but they don't and what you end up with is that middle area that currently is doing it so gallagher because he has a double figure baseline if he then scores he's on 28 Gold. He's already in. Yeah. yeah. Gold. The only thing that hurts him occasionally, the only reason why he's only got 10 on the baseline is because he gets booked occasionally, which takes three off every time he does it, but he'd actually be even higher than that. I would say there's that one role in centre midfield, so it was MacArthur, it's been recently been Will Hughes, and actually if you watch Palace games, you can kind of see it. He's always involved Will Hughes. He is actually dictating a lot of the play. His baseline's really strong, um, and if they ever score or assist, they can take it home because what also benefits Gallagher is they often can see one goal and therefore they can see one goal. They win one, two ones and things like that. Three ones and those types of things. Yeah. And it so the entire up... defense, the entire defense lose their 12 points. That happens. And he sits nicely with, nicely with his 18 points the other way. Yeah. And for everything that Connor does badly in terms of his fouls, he also recovers the ball like six times a game, which then Cause he's hurts. fucking everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> You know, and, and so he's it's one of the most of those mental heat maps. He has one of the most mental heat maps you'll see. Honestly, the only thing that hurts the strikers they miss big chances. Yeah, you know, Benteke, Edward, when you see him, they do. Yep. Everton. 
Everton. This is one where if I'd have done this beforehand, this is the first example, I would change my decision and I would have gone to Corre over Gray as a, as a pick. And so looking at the double game week, I think I would have gone that because they, they're not much different in terms of returns, not as different as you think they, they should be. Um, but to Corre, he's a full box-to-box player and he's actually slyly picking up fairly good bonus and has been picking up even more about Cavalier and Rich in and out and all those type of players. The defence, I mean, look, look at how bad the defence is. Like they don't, not, they don't keep cleans. So three clean sheets all season. Well, I mean, their baseline, their baseline on average is lower than Burnley, right? So just to comparatively, how that, how, how that works. They're bad. It's just terrible. They're bad. Yeah. <laughs> across across the board, I mean, I'm a bit, you know, I, I wonder why we put this Calvert Lewin number in there because he's, you know, he played before he missed that penalty. Um, he played three games and he scored in all three, so he would have been. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> his it. numbers would have been so that's big. The but, beauty of him is, but I suppose the point is, is that he does do so little. Is I mean, he does so little that actually, when he does score, he just gets everything. Okay. He does walk away with it. So this is one just can't watch. stop missing penalties. Don't take it that he's a brilliant player that will get one point two five a game, but take it that he has when he's played so far, um, and this doesn't. Uh, this includes the penalty miss, the North pointer. Yeah. So this is one to watch on this one, but it looks like they're so bad that they're an issue. But Decore and Townsend have big bonus potential um, because they work harder, a lot harder. Than Damari Gray. Damari Gray is playing a very luxury role, you know, seven on his baseline. Um, even when he scores or assists, he doesn't actually get himself in the bonus. Um, and I don't think that makes him a particularly good pick. When I look at what Gallagher was offering and I look at what Gray was offering, and I think, hmm, if I was targeting one, I'd, uh, again, I was doing this again, I'd have gone to Corey. So I'm regretting my. Minus four for Damari. I'm hopefully, I'm hopeful now. Midweek we actually get a game against Leicester, and he proves me wrong here and this muds this uh, this pod. But um, yeah, yeah. Leeds, Leeds. There's not a liar. I think the only thing that I really took from this on Leeds was Rafinha. It, my view on Rafinha is he does everything for Leeds. That's how I see him as a player. That's but, not how FPL see him. <laughs> and they used to see him that way. So do you remember there was games where he didn't return? There was a game last season, double game week, where he didn't return and still got two in the bonus because he kept creating big chances and stuff yeah. like that. But I wonder this whether might... that's I wonder whether that's a result. That's a, ta- that's a tactical thing rather more so than a... The, and it's just been a result of Leeds' season so far, with all the injuries they've had, the change in the, change in the way they've played, everything yeah. that has contributed towards that. And the fact that it's not Bamford up there for him, it's him, or it has been. Yeah. It's just been him. So it's not like I've got to cross it into a whoever. It's I've got to do this shit myself. So what yeah. he does is he ends up taking players on, uh, he gets tackled, loses, bo- loses points on his bonus. He <laughs> takes shots, miss the target, loses points on his bonus. He doesn't cross it in, and get it on Bamford's toe, which goes wide, and gets a point for it. And that's the difference. He gets tackled something like five times a game. So he loses five mo- points on his bonus yeah, every just week. Every, just for that. getting tackled. Because he's literally like... I've got to do it myself. Again. I always think, you know, that, that, that like Grand Theft Auto man with the old, here we go again, that guy. I always think that's how it, how it looks like. Oh, where, where he, pick, where he picks ball. it up on the right hand side. like, <laughs> here, here we, we go, go again. again. I better go. And he gets, gets tackled. So it is hurting him. But he's yeah. been doing so well when he has planned and carried what he can do that he's still doing okay from a bonus perspective. Um, <sighs> Melier, that is as good as it gets, really, from a goalkeeper. 17 from a baseline is, is as good as you can be. But it's because he's just so busy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not always been practiced. It's just that he's constantly getting, having to make saves and therefore it just... It hurts him so much. But Melier Cooper um, is 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 good. I, 
I didn't even highlight A-Ling. I don't know why I didn't, because actually it's pretty good. You know, it's very good uh, on here in terms of 15 <laughs> on the baseline. Shows how bad Furpo is, though. Like, when you look at his, like, that is horrific. You know, is is look at it, you watch him play, though. He's always fouling. He's always kicking people up in the air. Yeah. Does him in big. Does him in. So that's going to be interesting to see how that changes when Badman's back. But, um Rafinha is fighting hard to get some bonus out of that one. He is fighting hard. Let's move on. Leicester. I like this one. Mm, yes. I like this one. And it, it drove me to look at more stuff. Um, Schmeichel at the start are highlighted, but we should caveat... Well, his total, probably... total BPS and his bonus points will be a direct correlation to the Salah penalty save. Yeah, it's almost like me saying I just wanted to point out that he saved a penalty by Salah again. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's, defi that's definitely what you did. Yeah, it's definitely what I did. But, you know, Ricky P, we love Ricky P, has got as many bonus as the rest of the rest of the Leicester's defence combined. He played eight games. That's how bad Leicester's yeah, yeah. defence is. It's just avoid you know in that area the good news is that when a team doesn't do anything at the back it pushes any bonus points forward yeah and, and you know we know that we know that vardy we know that vardy picks up bonus yep. when he scores we know that he does so you know and he's then we had he obviously had that hot streak between like six and set or five and mm. 11 or something like that um you know and it's yeah. yeah, almost a point, almost a point per game this season is 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 mad. It's really, really good. It starts to it starts to help to tell actually as a team when you look at it. Think about all those times that Vardy got three points as to why did he get them? And it's because the rest of the team don't do enough to be able to, to be able to get it. Um, it's all going three ways at the moment. Vardy, who's not here for eight weeks, and then you look at Tillman and you say, "Blimey!" Like he doesn't get in the box that much, and he doesn't score. You know, it doesn't create or shoot as much when he scores it tends to be a worldie um or a penalty yeah or, but he is now got penalties for eight weeks he has a baseline of nearly 14 yeah so you add 18 points every time he gets a penalty it's like the so Jorginho it effect yep. all over again and he's more exciting for me than Jorginho as a player like he can bang worldies Jorginho just can take pass a penalty into a net yeah um and then Madison, and I'm not against the double up either. Like 13 million for those two players, averaging over half a bonus point per game. I can see if they win penalties, it's because Madison will dive on the floor anyway. Um, <laughs> and you get the assist, you get the goal, and you get five bonus between the pair of them. They are very, very, very good. The, the bit that shocked me, so when I've been looking at this, is really as a fullback, or any defender, you want about 13, 14 on the bonus. Keepers, you want over 15 on the bonus. Centre midfielders, like double figures minimum. And then wingers, if you're above eight, you've got a good chance on the bonus. If you're below, you've got to be an absolute weapon and, and deliver multiple returns to be able to get yourself involved in it. Strikers, you just need to be the talisman. So when I saw that Madison was like seven and a half, I thought, whoa, my vision always of Madison is that he's a creative midfielder. That's kind of how I see him and think of him. And I'm like, that's not a creative midfielder's kind of kind of baseline. Like that's somebody that's really a weapon, somebody I want to move forward. So I had a look and I went back and then 18, 19 season, baseline was over 12. 1920 season baseline over 12 last season and do you remember we, we talked about that interview did last season and we were like oh he sounds like he i love it when total he control of it his game yeah. and actually is all over his stats last yeah. season baseline of eight this season baseline of 7.5 you're like this guy has physically changed the way he plays from a creative player to a weapon and i'm like how's that playing out and he got those two seasons where he had a baseline of 12, he got 25 returns in 67 games. Since then, last season, this season, he's got 25 returns, same, in 49 games. He's averaging a return every other game now. Yeah. 
we talked about him before that you get him in, he trolls you and goes two, 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 two. That's not him anymore. Well, no, and he's he's recently gone like 10, 16, 2, 10, 16, which has been fuck. Like, yeah. The, my only my only concern, my only worry now, though, just thinking about form, is that you know that has to regress. I feel like it has to regress. Although, although there's no going to be a reliance. There's no Vardy. There's going to be a reliance on someone to essentially step up, and if that's not Ianacho because he's at Afcon, then I mean, Daka's still. We're not sure. We're not sure. Maybe Lookman. Next weeks, but Lookman and Barnes are probably going to feel the ones. Next, but... They're going to start. They're going to start with like two, two wide, and then Madison's going to be like through that arrow through the middle. Go look at sofa score for today in that FA yeah. Cup game. See his well, average position. I, I didn't. I didn't do that. So I will. I will do he's that. He's the number but, nine, yeah. mate. He is up there. So uh, if he's if he's already dropping his baseline, like in terms of the way he performs anyway, and he's improving his returns. Then, and, he says, and there's no strikers in front of him. What are his fixtures like? <laughs> well, he's got double. I mean, he's got a double. Yeah. The problem with Leicester at the moment is just, can they get the team out every week? We're going to be worrying about it this week. You're going to well, be yeah, worrying about it for, for, for next week. We're saying they've, a, got, they've got eight players or something like that. On a free hit, though, I know they've got Tottenham, but I wouldn't be against the Tillmans and Madison double up. I definitely wouldn't be against it is that they are interesting as, as as players but he's changed his narrative madison for me as a player yeah and then tillman's a completely different benefit high baseline on pens guaranteed bonus if he gets one it's the same thing as sounds like a about. really nice he, double he is like he is a, he is a double digit return Every time they get a penalty, because it gets two plus it's five plus it's three, just just almost nailed on. He's getting ten pointers if, he, if they get a pen. They're interesting. They're really interesting. Those two people. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I suppose we better move on to the monsters. Yeah, we've got two monsters now, and then then we've got Man United. Um, <laughs> Liverpool. How hard done by is Van Dyke, Matip, Canate, even Addison on this one? Like, just look at these baselines at Liverpool. 14, we said about 14s being exceptional. You've got like 14, 15, 14, 14, Robertson, 14, and then you go Trent. Trent. 17.8. It's just. No keeper matches Trent. Yeah, like, he's just he averages three co passes a game, so he gets nine on his baseline just for key passes. He gets six for playing, so so he's just in before he even starts. Does he also as a bad defender? He doesn't need to be. He just gets it through them. Yeah, it's you know. true. He... The, clean, the clean sheet's a massive bonus, obviously. For, I mean, as soon as they keep a clean sheet. He's yeah. almost nailed on. I mean, and the thing is, obviously, we, we everyone looks back to that West Ham game, though, don't they? He's just, he's just a, a, an animal, and that's how because he offers so much on his baseline. Even without, so if you've got seventeen point eight three and he gets an assist, he's there on twenty seven points basically. And then if they concede, he's still on twenty seven points. <laughs> and so he's what we've talked about other defenders about what they get if they get a clean he's on that if he gets an assist let yeah. alone if he gets a clean and that's how it happens he's, he gets free bonus sometimes without without a clean yeah he's, he's averaging 30 points a game that's just go back go back go back let me just, we just go back back to the very very start what what was the um Liverpool average their top five average 18 points against them in a game and he averages 17.8 on his baseline yeah <laughs> so he starts above them and then any return he gets he's already beat the opposition so who's that it's definitely Norwich are definitely behind him I know it's average but Norwich are behind him. De well actually their not quite players are lower than his baseline even if he does 
doesn't return in a game. Amazing. He's he's that brilliant at that asset, and that's why he's getting one and a half points per game. Yeah, nuts. Nuts. And he's, that's the reason why, I mean, that's the key reason why, like, Mane and Jota can't even get a look in, because Trent's obviously picking up two or three. Well, I say he's one and a half, but he's generally in and around two or three unless they lose. Um Although even sometimes even he does that, okay, is that's how good he is? Um, and so they can't get a look in even with their even with their they goals, or their contributions. It in anyway. and well, that's if, it. So if he doesn't put it in, it comes from the other man on the right hand side, Salah. So and then Salah goes and scores, and then Salah gets it anyway. Yeah. So like Mane and Jota, like it's just. <laughs> and that's why you can't go Mane. You just cannot go Mane. They've got four bonus points between them. And they've had 23 returns between them. Fuck. In 20 games. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> like, Mano and Jota just get hammered. The only person that could compete with Trent is Firmino. He's the only man in the world that can compete with him. And it's because he's an actual forward. So, mm. he, so he gets to 24 points every time he scores. And because he doesn't actually operate as a forward he operates yeah. midfield so so he gets more baseline so even though out of his 11 appearances seven have been off the bench he's still got a baseline of five because he immediately comes in tip 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 you know does yeah. all those those things that is i mean he's totally his, his bps is, is skewed slightly by the hat trick it but... is but wait that's seven that's seven yeah, that's 72 points that is 72 points just from goals in one game. Yeah. He's, he is... Um, Firmino, though, is like, like, that's going to be the interesting next couple of weeks when he actually plays. If Firmino scores, suddenly Trent has somebody that, that, that can compete with him. Mm. But Van Dijk is so much better than any other defender in the league. Any and player. And, and, and he's still averaging less than half a bonus point per game from a baseline yeah. perspective, because he's got Trent in front of him. Robertson, similar, you know, but because Robertson and Van Dijk and Trent, if they keep it clean, any of those midfielders have got a double return to get in the bonus. That's the only option of to get in there, you know, and and Matt and Canate are pretty, uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, they're, they're just animals. They are animals. Um, and, Talking from one animal to the next, we go to City, shall we? Seems like a good plan. We should make sure we've caveated this when it comes up. We've just gone A to Z here, so we are not deliberately setting Man United up when we go to the next one. But it just <laughs> when you see what Liverpool just done there, then we go we'll see what City have done there. Then we look at United. It's like, wow. That was yeah. that was the thing that stood out to me. So the thing that stands out to me on on City is the total BPS is their baselines are much lower than Liverpool in general, but they're also much more consistent than Liverpool. Is So the lowest in the whole squad is Fernandinho, and his doesn't really count because all his performances are like 10 minutes off the bench here and there. So if you think about the players that play, they really kind of sit around the middle. You, if you play in the team regularly, you perform somewhere between about eight and Thirteen, and that's how you see it when you watch them. They're like Harlem Globetrotters, aren't they? They just—they all can pass, they all can do, they all don't have position. Yeah. If, anything, if anything, it's only really Jesus that that you feel might be yeah. slightly lower than expected. But that kind of makes sense because everybody else, everybody around him is doing doing the shit. They're doing they're doing all yeah. the stuff. But then Jesus is like his baseline compared to most forwards is fantastic. Eight it's is ridiculous. Huge. Eight is huge. If you look around the others, it's more like two, three, four. Um, so it is massive. In comparison, huge. agreed. Um, so he does just have to score. Them are Foden as a winger, 9.77. So we've got centre midfielders that are not averaging that as a baseline. That's why he's such, he's an explosive asset with a high baseline. That's gold, you know, a, as a player. Bernardo, he's doing, we get upset as Bernardo owners that he's doing the defensive midfield work and he's doing the mid centre midfield work. But he's getting... 13.7, like, 
that's hard work for a lot of midfielders. He does it and then he gets the odd in the return. And when he does, you know, you saw it in the, um, he got an assist on the weekend and gets two bonus, or he was getting two bonus until we took the late booking against Arsenal. He'd have got two bonus for just an assist. Yeah. Just falling over when Shaka peeled his shirt would have got him two bonus because of how much hard work he'd put in. Um, like, there's some, there's so many monsters in this team. It's just well spread because it, because they all work so hard, it kind of tends to be who gets the return. Um, Cancelo, though, he's not own. This is what he didn't do last season. Diaz and Laporte outbased him, and he had to get the returns. He's now out baselining him, and I think part of that's the amount of games he's played at right back. I think that helps him from a just natural position. Um, crosses more because he's on his natural side. Not that they cross a lot, but you know those crappy crosses where. Newcastle defenders duck out of the way and all those type of things. Um, he, he does make more crosses because he's been playing more games on his natural side. Um, yep. 0.85 per game is just just monster, but they're all good. Um, even Sterling, who looks like here, he's got quite a low baseline. So his baseline is 6.88 for the season. That is not reflective of the last 10 game weeks. In the last 10 game weeks, his, his uh, uh, baseline's been over double figures in almost every single game. He's averaging about 13 on his baseline. He's never, ever averaged a season more than six. So he's not only at the moment returning on a regular basis, got seven goals and his, or six goals and an assist in his last eight games, he's got a high baseline. Hmm. Um, Sterling... He's a good place to spend money potentially if Sun ends up. Sun ends up being five, six weeks, not two weeks, or not less. Yeah, yeah. I'm tempted to maybe free hit rather than move Sun out somewhere else, so I can then go Sun to Sterling next week. Um, Interesting. Keep the money, but that's uh, because I think he is a he's a very good asset. United. They get quicker actually as we go along these next few. There's about. <laughs> There's actually probably only two teams, that's three four, teams we want to talk about. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Are there... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to work it out. I'm just trying to look at face value, what what I'm looking for. I mean... <laughs> so, the only thing... The only thing I, I mean, Bruno... Bruno's their second highest bonus point scorer so far this season. Yeah. Uh, and he's got six, so... <laughs> Right. <laughs> Didn't he get free right. in the first game? You got free yes, because he scored a hat. Because he scored a hat trick. Yeah, exactly. Oh, 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 oh. So, so since game week one, he's had three bonus points. That's it. Um, it's just an ineffective out outfield team. I mean, De Gea is okay, yeah. but they're just not keeping enough clean sheets. Um, in on, in honesty, it's a squad of not doing good things. Which yeah, is exactly just poor. what we've seen. And in fact, and actually, if you well, well, the games themselves, but even if you just if you, even if we're looking like Twitter um, a few days ago, I was seeing people talking about the tactics being poor, and some people were just piling out with these clips of like not being able to pass it ten yards, and all these misplaced passes, all these tackles, and all this sort of stuff, tackles against them, it's just not it's just not great, and it's the biggest uh, problem. The, the what I took from only six bonus points being awarded per game for them. It felt I mean, it may not be completely accurate, but it feels like they either blow hot or they blow cold, and it's like, mm. how can you guarantee or how can you know or how can you be comfortable which side of that kettle you're going to be on? I mean, or or, or whatever. It's I mean, difficult. it's difficult. The only thing is that because they do absolutely nothing, is that Ronaldo when he scores picks up everything, everything. because because genuinely when they win, you know they're picking up the six. Um, rather than rather than sharing them amongst uh, amongst the rest of the other teams, so you know, it's... if he scores, he gets his goals are worth seven points every time because he gets his four and he gets he's just nailed on to get it because their baselines are so low. None of the forward line that has happened more recently though. That has happened more recently as well though is that they've been picking up more bonus more recently. Um, you know, they had a spell between game week six and game week. Uh, was it game week six and game week thirteen where they gave up? You know, they gave up 
almost five bonus points on all but two occasions. At least five bonus points on all but two two occasions. Yeah, yeah the result of that was Ole being sacked. So it was quite yeah, quite I mean, clear. That, and I think Ronaldo, <laughs> Ren- yeah, Ronaldo, Ronaldo picking up these points as bad as they're playing. I mean, if he does score two goals in the in the double, it's eighteen points. It's exactly that because Villa we talked about terrible baseline team. Have been yeah, so and, can, and, and their last and the last three games, well, the last three out of four games, they've they've conceded almost six of the bonus on all yep. three of them. So they're not and, playing great. And they've definitely on penalties because Bruno missed the one against Emmy last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Brentford, who have been terrible, just shit. So. I think you're a brave man to go without Ronaldo in this one, and I still think he is <coughs> probably my prime captain choice um, for it because he could easily jam two goals. You know, the goal he scored against Burnley was like 0.9 xg, whatever it was, just tapping one off off the crossbar, whatever it was, and he just needs to do that twice, and he walks away with 18 points, and you've got 36 points in the bag, and see you later. I would be very uncomfortable not owning him for two games against teams that that's yeah that son injury's well. fucking killed me i mean um yeah. it's yeah we've got to try and find where to use some money and 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 the like and i think ronaldo it's hard to go against it so as much as we can laugh about some of the other things what i do know is i trust bruno as a player and what you saw when he came on against walls the other night was he's mm. just a much better player than the rest of that team yeah um and if he suddenly hits form, then, you know, he could be on there. So if I was to free hit, for example, I would definitely have Bruno in my team for this double. Definitely. Because I just feel like it's wide open. He's against... We we, we just know historically he used to shit bonus. Um, and yeah. he's against two teams that don't. And I just feel like is is even though it's... And, and it's two away games. Remember when we used to go like Bruno's oh, away? Oh, yeah. All Love over it. it. Yeah, I I love the idea of Bruno for some. Um, I love it. Newcastle. Just just a slightly worse Man United. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, United fans. Pranny, I watch this. Garth, um, Danny. <laughs> Just watch it. Is is to yeah. It's it's but. From a Newcastle perspective, it's, it's everything you know about it. If Wilson scores, great, he's going to get the bonus. If St. Maximum scores, great, he's going to get the bonus. Be interesting to see how Trippier does on this one because I think he'll probably take a lot of stuff. They just need to. The only the only thing that would put me off Trippier per se, I mean Trippier would make me like Wilson. Only more. thing. Only thing. He's new. What are you going to say he's Newcastle? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just going to say their defence is bad, which means he yeah. won't, they won't keep... So I was just going to literally say they won't keep clean sheets. They won't. So the fact they won't keep clean sheets makes Trippier obviously a bad option. He'll be priced but... a similar price to a Cucciarella, and I'll be like, I'll have Cucciarella, thanks. See you later. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, yeah, he's, he's five. So, yeah, he's five. Yeah, really. yeah. So, but in some of the easier fixtures, maybe when, if they start picking up, you know, they're going to make more signings, right? So I think he makes, a Will, I think he makes Wilson more interesting as well. More more interesting than he already is. Good point. Um, just because he's cause Wilson out of the out of the two out of ASM and Wilson. I mean, ASM's not going to benefit from Trippier ever. So no, he scored that goal from the back post cross, wasn't there? There was one open from the right. I remember he scored, and it just went that way. You know, <laughs> we're saying we're saying all this. They've just lost one nil to Cambridge in the FA Cup. Norwich, move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even ready for that. Hold on, this is, this is a great one as well. This is a great one. It's just. There's no, there's no, there's no picture of a player here because nobody's saying there's just a fucking target on their. Um, you're on almost their guaranteed. No, you're guaranteed to get in your team to have four or five on the bonus if you're playing against them. So you just got to go at it. Um, I'll just remove the target quickly so people can see the number and then I'll put it back so that it is probably a little insulting towards Pookie. I do feel like he has still the opportunity to do okay, but um, their 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 only sort of competitors was. Omo, the old defender, and he's only played one. He scored and somehow jammed a three pointer, so he he gets he get his looks all right. And, and Norman, who's basically out of the season, so it's just horrific. There's so many naught point noughts there. Just 
Southampton. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Move on. Move the on. shock, the shock of this research here is I love Jan, this. It's Bednarek. Like, I, I don't know how I've not noticed this. He's played 14 games, including one off the bench, and he's got 12 bonus. So, for anyone that can see this, he's got 0.86 bonus per game. Um, and I'm going to bring back the City game, the City team, to show you Cancelo has averaged 0.85. Bonus Benerich per game. Better than Cancelo. That's what you're taking from that's, this pod today. That's what we're taking. That's what we're saying. That is a uh, above average FPL. This tip. season. Get Bednarek. This season. Sack off Cancelo. But Trent. <laughs> Trent James. Trent. Bednarek. Bednarek. <laughs> everyone's, been going, everyone's been going Trent, James and Cancelo. What idiots. We should have Bednarek in the team. True. Unless you captain Cancelo when he scored and got an assist and but got 36 part, points. Part of it is that yeah, you did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did uh, that. Is <laughs> their baselines are pretty bad in general. Um, some of that's because they take their strikers off a lot and they they change them around. And they move them around so much. Yeah. Yeah. Will Prowse decided to get himself sent off. That didn't help him. Um, <laughs> you know, if Will Prowse does more, he's gold. But he actually hasn't done a lot this season. You know, compared to previous seasons, is is. Um, his baseline is always consistently strong because he just creates every, he's such a vacuum for the ball that actually it takes away so much from all the rest of them um, Forster's looks a bit skewed in that he's only played two games but it's probably just one to keep an eye on that one um, the striker ones I actually think you know when you look at the per appearance to achieve what Adams and Broger have achieved is is really impressive. You know, is is Broger's come off the bench eight times in his fifteen games, and yet it's still averaging point six bonus per game. He, he's a he's a star, you know, of the future to have done what he's done in in those games. If he could just start every game, he'd just be just be a monster of a player, and um, hopefully he'll get more as it goes through the season. He's getting older and other minutes but then you guess your question is he's definitely going back at the end of the season so um yeah maybe they, maybe they won't you know and and um but yeah he's he's just he's just a very very, very good player um but it in defense i guess livermento i look at it and think actually we all thought he was quite good on the bonus early on and it's died yeah it's died we're going tottenham let's go tottenham <sighs> quite a lot of yellow there this is a fun one. It's a fun one. So there's only eight games. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Let's caveat that once again. It's Everyone only likes to get sent off on those ones, but let's. Um... Well, I mean, in in it, the main focus here is on is on the defenders, right? I mean, it's, it's not just just ridiculous how good Conte has been for our defenders, obviously, uh, in in particular. I mean. The defenders under Nuno, so under 10 games under Nuno, we get three clean sheets, we had two assists, um, eight bonus points is what... So that's all the defenders, three Combined. cleans, two assists, eight bonus points. Yeah. So in the last... La last season, they got 25 bonus in the whole season. 38 games under Mourinho. Amazing. Or a bit of Mason, but 25 whole season. Yeah. So in the last eight games, five clean sheets, three goals, five assists. So it's eight attacking returns in the last eight games from the defence. 23 bonus points already. So we're just two behind the last... Whole um, of last season. The last, whole of last season. It was funny because I, I, a couple of, was it a week ago, I went, I don't think I'm going to bother with the Spurs defender. I might fucking triple up. You know, it's, it's like, I've, been, I've been getting abuse all the time about saying which one's the best one, which one's the best one. Just get not. them all. We get them all. The good news, I suppose, is good and bad news. Good news is there's a double, so that might be good. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that who plays them? You know, is Romero just about back? Session should be back into the squad for, for those two. It's a difficult one now, yeah. He's outwardly saying his squad's not good enough and that he needs to buy people. There's rumours about a right wing back. There's rumours about a left wing back. There's rumours about a left sided centre back. Um, I think Dyer is easily the most safe. 
player in that team. Um, he's producing a baseline at over 15. That is Van Dyke level. Only Van Dyke as a centre back in the league produces, and, and Thiago Silva, sorry. Um, but he's playing that similar role to Thiago Silva, where he's the central one. He's just ticking, ticking, ticking away. But a bit like Thiago, he's not going to get you the, the, those attacking returns that those other ones are at the moment. Mm. And they are getting them. So none of us went for Thiago when we could have gone for James or Chilwell. Should we go for Dyer when we can go for the Emerson, Reggie, the whoever ones? it is? But yes, Emerson is also beating Cancelo under Conte. Zero point eight six bonus per game he's playing. That's big. Based on a full team, it's big. And we've talked before about. Emerson will always be involved, but we think Reggie will get the bigger chances, and that's that's how they'll play. Yeah. Reggie is a massive standout there in his baseline at eight. Yeah. Nothing like the rest of them. But he's still turning it in because <laughs> he has kept cleans and he has scored. Um, and, you know, if he can keep, keep returning, he'll keep doing well. It's it's he's had three attacking returns into eight games under Conte. Much as I whinge about it, they can't be that unhappy with him when he scores that. I'm more looking at like when you've got two games in a short period of time, I just feel like I feel like Seth might step in. Um and that'll be the interesting one to look at when put Seth up because he's not played any games. Yeah. What about the attacks though? Kane's averaging 0.12 bonus points because they, they're just stealing them all. So they're at basically averaging three point bonus points per game in defence at the moment out of our four and a half, whatever we're averaging as, as, as a team. Um, Hoiberg has a really high bonus potential because even with an assist, sometimes he gets one um, because his baseline's so good, despite the fact that I hate him as a player. Really hate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucas massively upped his baseline under Conte. He is working so hard. And then when he scores, he's involved. You know, he's averaging 0. 0.5 um, bonus per game. The only striker in the league with less than 0. 0.12 bonus points per game that plays is Timo Werner. That's Doesn't it. even play. Doesn't even play. So in terms of the players that actually play in the striker position, so Vidra was 0.13, Chris Wood was 0.18, Kane is averaging 0.12 bonus points per game, worst in the league. He averaged So what we're saying, what we're saying is what we're saying really is that even if he sc well, if we look at last season, right, when he scored or when he was involved with Son you know, they would share top bonus when they yeah. scored, assisted all the time because yeah. there was so little that was going on at the back and everything was focused on the front. Yeah. But now, even despite the goals, if, if even if he scores up top, he's not going to get that extra three points. So last season, a goal was worth, let's say on average, eight points. Um, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, no, he gets four, sorry. He gets four for a goal. So let's say on average, a, a goal last season for him was worth six points. That goal is most certainly worth four points this season uh, because the guys at the back are just doing everything that contributes towards towards picking up bonus points. You had that joke last season, didn't you, about it would go on all the time about Kane was getting defensive mids and that they're playing defensive mid but getting nine points every game type thing. The good news about playing defensive mid was that he was it, playing key passes. Picking up, picking he up was, baseline. He was picking up baseline, picking up baseline, picking up baseline. His baseline for this season is, you know, we've not, we've talked about it. Conte likes to play the number nine as the number nine. Because they're standing right up top, he's not doing anything. They don't do anything. Which is uh, why you shouldn't captain Havertz, ever. Like, yeah, he's literally standing up there. He's getting 3.6 on his baseline. Which means if he scores, he sometimes gets up to 30. But 
you've got if they keep a clean dyer's up with him virtually as uh, uh, that and if one of the <laughs> one of the one of the wing backs set him up and they get a clean no chance he's done he's done absolutely no chance and the, and the defenders are averaging one attack in return every game <laughs> so like somebody is going to take him all the time and yeah what we don't know is the impact of Sun being out potentially might change that. But mm. where I felt like Kane was such a good option when I went on him earlier in the season and it worked out badly, now I'm like, it's a punt. But Tottenham, for all of the whinging, for all of where they're at, if you look at what they've done under Conte, they're, in, they're the third highest team for taking home bonus. They are, in terms of form, for the last um, six games, only City are above them. Um, and we're producing more than two XG a game. It's, producing it's... more than two XG in a game. So, yeah. So as much as every stat in this says to me that Kane is not the player he was, I do look at it and say last season, he averaged 1.14 bonus per game. He averaged one bonus more per game than what he's averaging currently. Mad. Maybe it'll change. <laughs> Um, maybe it'll change maybe it'll change it does lead me a bit more in the free hit world of though if I wanted to go on him I feel like mm, maybe I could free hit him and then I haven't fully committed and I'll see how it works out <laughs> yeah. see what I mean like it's like a, do you know is, is, is it might just be bad yeah West Ham West Ham before Watford we don't, do we do Watford oh shit yeah Watford sorry <laughs> I don't know why yeah my alphabet's gone fucked Sorry. Yeah. Similar Watford. <laughs> Look at the bonus points for their defenders. Yeah, nothing. Just... So keeper can have a really good baseline, but who cares because they can see goals every game. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's, 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 that, that, that was that was shown earlier on. We were just showing how many bonus how, how many bonus points those top five players score against Watford, and it's getting progressively worse it's getting progressively worse for Watford when we see we sort of see them as like this fun team um but it is genuinely getting worse I mean you know why well, I say getting worse it was 29.4 in it game 8 to 14 it and it's 28.75 it's just not much it's just not much better but the disparity between the two is getting worse they were seven points behind in game weeks one to seven and eight to 14 they're now looking at 11 so it's on average we have created a spreadsheet where dennis is better than king amazing we win we win we've done it we've done it we've done it Just... boys <laughs> it gets them but it's a similar to the ronaldo thing in that if he scores he's got a chance because the rest of them yep do so so little right, so we say we we've we've made a spreadsheet it's it's based on grass isn't it it's based on results off grass it is. It's, I mean, it's not the baseline. It's just he scores. He, he gets scores. it. Yeah, exactly. Two left. West Ham. West Ham. Let's go, West Ham. Oh, Cresswell's such an asset if he's playing. But he's not playing. If only. If only. They, 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 they're, they've been pretty consistent, actually, throughout the season in in how they've how they've performed, despite, you know, they sort of really got... Yeah. But they have these, they have, they have these little spurts of just being like great, like the, like the West, the 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 Liverpool game was just like ridiculous, like it was just absolutely ridiculous, how how good that was for them. Um, if I'd done this, this is another one similar to the grey one. If I'd done this one, this research before we, the game week had started, I would have kept an Antonio overblown. Yeah. It's, it makes sense when you look at it. Is we want Bowen because he's playing really far forward, but the further forward he plays, the less he does, which means his baseline drops. It's less likely to get on the bonus. It's just reducing the avenues to points. He's not getting. And any. What you're trying to do is you're trying to maximise them. Yep. He's not getting any. Whereas all it takes is one goal from Antonio, and Bowen needs so multiple returns the second that Antonio gets anything on the board. I wonder what the I wonder how different this would look pre that Lanzini. This is including the Lanzini fifteen pointer, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'm just wondering where, where how that would look because I mean he wouldn't even Lanzini wouldn't be too far behind Bowen here. 
No, Lanzini actually is baseline's pretty strong. Considering it, cause, cause considering how many subs. yeah exactly nine nine subs so yeah yeah what it what it does show you Declan Rice is the best midfielder in the league mm. as a centre midfielder he's the best midfielder in the league he does literally everything you could ever want of a midfielder over fifteen for a central midfielder as a baseline it's just obscene you know so i'm highlighting this not so much for his bonus potential but just to show how good a player he is and if he's out of that team at any point it's such a loss for them um, yeah i mean if you, if you just, just let's just let's just com- let's just do some comparisons on that so so rodri mm. 14 Best henderson in the world, <laughs> you know Hend- it, it, henderson yeah, yeah. 12 12 12.3 12. kante 11.2 so yeah, yeah, he's just ridiculous. He's a ridiculous ridiculously player. good. So good. So good a player. And Cresswell, when he plays, it just, no bone, no defender can get anywhere near him. It's, it's such a good standout player as he was last season for them in that bonus perspective because he crosses the ball. Because that's the thing. He crosses and he's got a very, very good cross. And he often crosses from deep, like 30 yards out. And he gets it onto someone's head. Someone's head. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't result in very much. It's an open play cross that's successful. So he just gets tick, 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 tick. You know, he's, yeah. So if he comes back, he's, he's definitely another asset to, that I'll be looking back to. But um, it always geared. And it's so often in a 4 2 3 1, it's geared towards the striker. That's why Watkins does well. That's why Antonio does well. Um, and we'll go to the last one, which is Wolves. And that's why Huang and Jimenez do well. Yeah. Huang does better because he's one of the very few people that's a forward, but categ- uh, a midfielder categorised as a forward effectively, that he's playing like the left wing side of a 4 2 3 1 and gets categorised as a forward. So when he actually does score, he then gets much more in there. And he had a very good start to the season. So that yes. is, is skewed by the fact, I think it was like point, I think he was like one on the bonus up to about game week 12 or something like that. And it's just then dropped off. But um, those ones where you've got um, a four, two, three, one, just full backs tend to do okay. Um, forward tend to do okay. In general, their baselines are pretty good. As, as a team, you can see that when you watch it, they're sort of binary results in it of one nil, nil one, you know, and all those ones. Yeah. Because they don't tend, to, they tend to just keep themselves in games and they do a lot of blocks and they put a lot of pressures on and they do a lot of short passes and how they play. They're actually quite a decent bonus team in that they all tick along. So you can see it on their, um, on their baselines. It's like 12's the best and, 13 and a half, you know, 30 half's the best, 12's the worst type thing. Yeah, they share it around an awful lot. Um, but they often tick along with those players in their team. They often, yeah, but you've got the same on the flip side is that when they're sharing these nil-nils and, and stuff like that is that, you know, they're having to share with the other team as well. So there's, you know, they've, I think they've got one of the highest, um, you know, we saw they had this like the smallest disparity in, in their... yeah. They often do as well as their opponent because it's obviously always a very close game. That's that's how it works. And it's basically, yeah. if they keep the clean, they get the bonus. And if they don't keep the clean, the other team get the bonus. Yeah. That's pretty much <laughs> how it works at Wolves. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, they'll get about three points for and they'll get about three points against yeah. on average. That's exactly, it's exactly how it's worked. Yeah. So that's us. 20 that, teams. 20 teams. I mean, look, we don't often do a big long pod like mm. this anymore, but it was international break and we thought there was something you know, interesting to look at. Um, so we hope you can forgive us this. <laughs> I'm looking at the time and saying hour and 50 minutes, thinking yeah. that we're close to that. Cause I think we started like five minutes into recording, but it's big. We will timestamp it. We've got to work through the timestamps, get those bits out. And, and mate, that, mate that you say we need to get through it. By the time people listen to it, it'll already be done. So we don't yeah, need to tell yeah. people about that bit. 
Um, <laughs> but that will help you to flick through your teams. But I think, think that you look at that first bit and, and start to think about how it plays into matches. I think it's, it's really useful. It's hard to do. It's, it's very data heavy, this. But um, hopefully it's something that people can refer back to and go, I just want to go look at Arsenal. I'll go look at that. I'll go look at Leeds. I'll go look at that. And hopefully that will be useful. Yeah. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, oh, to be fair, the timing is pretty good. I don't know if people do good, it though. looking at this much data because I'm like frazzled just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. You know, what we've said again, again, we've said if you want to, if you want to get a copy of this, you know, just that we're happy to give it out, but you do have to do a couple of things. Just, just help us out. Retweet the, um, the pod, pod episode. Um, give us a like on, on YouTube, do that, do that good stuff for us, and we can do good stuff for you. You know, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, type thing. Yeah. Um, follow the podcast on Twitter at Above Average FPL. Follow Baker at Baker FPL three four three. We probably won't do. Are we going to do a pod no. pre deadline? Probably not. We'll do a space. We'll do a space. I think we'll do a space. Yeah, we'll do a space. We do we'll commit to that. Cool. So we'll do a space pre uh, game week twenty two deadline. Yeah. Um, Anything else we need to say? See you later, mate. Have a good one, mate. Speak to you soon. Bye, mate. Cheers, mate.